I am here with the gorgeous Brittany Williams. Yes, that's my name. That's your name. <laughs> and Mia is doing a dog dance, trying to get in the shot. She, hey, Mia, you want to be in? Come with here. the face this pretty, Mia should should definitely Come join. Come here, squirrel. She's my squirrel. <laughs> Come on, Mia. She's being camera shy. You're never shy. Hey, hi. So what kind of dog is Mia? She's a teacup Pomeranian. But she didn't know she's a teacup. No, well, no. <laughs> she thinks she's a pit bull. <laughs> Don't you? Yes. You're so cute. Okay, so I want to start off with a little rapid fire. Okay. So just say the first thing that comes to your head when I say the word. Okay. They're going to be great. Okay. All right, let's go. Bucket list. Oh, I want to go to Tahiti. Oh. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Great. I have a few, like Bora Bora. There's a bunch. You know those What's little on huts your- on the water? Yes. That's what I want to do. Okay, so Tahiti, like island. You're an island girl? totally island but but not just any island you know I want to go to like the really really cool ones the problem is the travel time and my husband won't go he won't go well he's just like that takes too long no <laughs> how about the Bahamas I'm like well I mean that's great too <laughs> however you know you gotta you gotta do a little more like you want to like island hop try them all out. I think it would be worth the travel time because you guys got married in Mexico we did so y'all started off your relationship island bound island totally actually yeah, he wanted to get married at the beach, so it was mostly his idea. I was kind of like, I don't care, because at the end of the day, I get to marry you, and that's all good. Wherever we go, I don't care. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and your hair was amazing. You did say something on your wedding day, though, that never try new products. Yeah, never, <laughs> never try new products, because I tried a sunscreen. It was Sun Bomb. And my skin's super sensitive. So we left uh, little gift boxes in all the rooms for all of our guests. And Sun Bum, we had like aloe and chapstick and sunscreen and all this. So I was like, well, I obviously don't want to be sunburned on my wedding day. So I'm going to use this. precaution. Yeah, just use this sunscreen. Not even thinking about it. Just put it on my face, though. It was like 30 or something. And then the next day I woke up and it looked like I had chicken pox. Oh. Like, everywhere <laughs> I'm like, having panic attack and then I was like okay I just need some tequila and it'll all be good that cures it all right yeah so I just started to drink pretty early and then <laughs> and then uh yeah I did I wanted to get in the sun because I was like maybe the but sun your will face help looked flawless. you couldn't tell you really couldn't tell but it was because I had a makeup artist and he was the jam I was like you know on all day of all days I want to do I don't want to do my makeup on my wedding day, so. For you to say that someone is the jam as a makeup artist, they must be pretty great, though, because you are, to me, like the makeup guru connoisseur of all. Oh, you're very sweet. Your makeup is out of this world. You obviously, like, this is your business, too. You have a YouTube page. You do pop-up seminars. Like, Mm -hmm. you always are telling people what kind of brands to use and, like, doing tutorials. So, for you to say that someone's great, he must be pretty good. He's good. His his name's Mac Daddy on Mac Instagram. Daddy. All right. And his name's Angel, but he is awesome. And I actually learn a lot from him. I'm like a sponge when I get other people to do my makeup because I'm always open to trying new products and all that. So he he really saved me that day because I was like having an internal attack, <laughs> like a panic attack. I was freaking out because it's your wedding. It's your day. wedding. Besides that, how was your wedding? Because it looked amazing. amazing. Absolutely, it really amazing. was. The weather was awesome. The paparazzi can kiss my butt did they other find than y'all? that did they oh find yeah you they were there? in a boat at the end of the aisle so you can imagine oh, I'm coming up gosh. over this sand dune and I'm like ah. like my husband's at the end of it and there's cameras everywhere in a boat oh, so and I'm like really, you know what people not, really are crazy like that yeah so some of my wedding party gave him the finger and all that it was great <laughs> I love that I didn't let him ruin it though that's great I, and I love that too because obviously you're married to Jason Aldean mm-hmm. and you are just so incredible in your own right but together you guys are this insane power couple so people when y'all got together y'all had just had a ton of energy around you guys but I feel like if anything y'all have been the strongest couple ever because people are so curious about your relationship and your wedding absolutely but it's like to me that's just like a great way to start it's like okay here yeah find out about it and we're gonna show you how great we are we haven't been through anything (laughs) like there's nothing else that could tear us down like we've been through so much (laughs) crap (laughs) that at this point it's like ah throw it at us it's fine you know, like nothing can break us because we've been through so much already. So it was like, you know, I just love him so much. And it's funny because sometimes you do things that are so not your character or so out of your realm for the people that you love. And that's that how you know a, it's love. Absolutely. Because I will be darned. I'm like, you know, sometimes I was like, oh, is this worth it? But it absolutely is because I got to marry 
such a good man. So I'm very blessed. You guys are the sweetest couple ever. Oh, so great. Thank you. So, okay. Got back, back to rapid fire. Yes. Happiness. My husband and animals. I'm going to throw you two. Any animal with a heartbeat, don't care. Which is also ironic because Jason does love to hunt and has a hunting show. So is that like yes. a dilemma in the marriage? Absolutely. <laughs> is if that you the biggest problem? On the wall <laughs> when we talk about this stuff, and we've just come to the point where we just have to agree to disagree right. because right. I'm like, I don't agree with you hunting. Okay, well, that's what I've always done, and this is part of a business that I'm involved in, and I'm over here. He even going, has a show about it, right? Absolutely. Okay, so and it's I've, not just like a hobby; it's a thing. It's yeah, it's a thing. It's and he enjoys it. Sincerely, grew up doing it and it's something that him and his dad used to do and I it could not make me like to the point where back in the day he would put camo on and I knew where he was going obviously I mean it would be full face paint and I would cry I would break down in the kitchen and throw a temper tantrum like please don't go I just I know what you're gonna go do and I just can't handle it so it's just to the point where we he doesn't talk about it it's like it doesn't exist because I'll go crazy I actually was interviewing Ali Ryan who has the dry house and yes. you go to the dry house yeah. get your hair done so do I so many great people go to the dry house and we yes. were talking about like different amazing people she does and one thing we said about you is you're basically Saint Francis which is the the, the saint of animals oh you love animals more than people I think most oh. of the time right 100% <laughs> I mean I'm sorry I love a lot of people in my life I love like a good amount but I love every there's not an animal that I don't where did that love come from? I don't really know. My parents say that I've always been that way. Like, they would fix red meat and pork, and I would just sit there and stare at the plate like, I can't eat this because that was a pig. Like, I knew way, way early on in life. And so I just have don't eat all that stuff. And, like, I just I don't you know. actually associate it with the living animal. I think I about it when I eat, and I there's no way. I know what you mean. You know, it's hard I just to feel process like, that thought. Okay, now I'm going to throw up. It wasn't even worth the, trying it the or whatever. The animal died for you to eat it and you Absolutely. feel sick. I know. I feel the same way. And it, I think about my dog and I'm like, it could have just as easily oh. been my dog. I know. <laughs> I went to, so I went to the University of Alabama and I went to a tailgate once and there was a, it was like a pig roast or what the heck ever. I don't know. I don't, I can't go to that stuff anymore, but I saw it and it, I have an English bulldog and it looked like my dog because my dog looks like a pig to me <laughs> <laughs> so I was like <gasps> scarred Silly. for life yeah that looks like my animal I feel you can't take it I love the animals I think that's so good so sweet know, yeah. yeah okay okay next icon Beyonce oh. always <sighs> yes oh. Yeah, and she's having her. twins. I know. It makes me want to have twins. I know. I want to have <laughs> twins so badly. She is uh, like the queen. She's the queen. And I've met her. Um, How was that? You have I, a picture with her too. I do. Thanks to my husband. He he was like, do you want a picture? I'm like, yes. But yes. I don't want to be that fangirl. But you, you know. Need, but you also. But he knew. I didn't have to say anything. He's like, you want it? I'm like, babe. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not going to ask because I'm not. I got to calm down here. <laughs> and uh, so we got a picture. She was so sweet. And it was funny because I was watching her as she kind of made her rounds around the room. And she was so in tune with every conversation with every person. So really? it wasn't like she was, don't know you, I'm going to keep it moving. She was in the zone with you. Yes. We were talking about Blue. She was talking about us having children. She was, I mean, such a normal person, but she just cared so much about every conversation that she was in. It was crazy. You know, I've heard that when I actually interviewed Megan Lindsay and she was talking about Pharrell and she was saying mm -hmm. that like when Pharrell speaks, he's like in the zone. Mm -hmm. Same with like Beyonce, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's amazing trait that people have to be in the moment with people. Absolutely. Even though they're wanted in all these moments. And you yeah. know that, you uh -huh. know how it feels. Yes. So, I mean, that's a crazy thing that she was able to do that. She, she was, you could just tell that she's so kind hearted. And so I was just watching her like, you're so amazing. You are just everything Wallace. yes oh my gosh she walked in this room she had on this little it was almost like a leotard and a cape I don't even know what she was wearing but she can she you can know anything. like yes. she could yes. wear a trash bag and she just <laughs> rocks it and she just walked in like it was like a force you know coming in the room and she just uh, I've always loved her but then ever since then knowing like how she kind of like you know was was with other people it was just really cool to see she's a good person too I love that. I know. So icon for sure. I give you that. I, I'm agreeing. Okay. Inspiration. Okay. Ooh. Oh. I would say, I would say Jace. Cause he's my husband, Jace. I call him Jace. Um, because he handles things with such grace 
like things that I would freak out over. Give me an example. Like, Not specific, but like. Okay, so I don't know if something goes on, you know, within his business or like on the tour, he never freaks. He doesn't. Ever. How I does mean, he not? You, it could, he could say the lighting truck isn't here today. The show's gonna, you're gonna have to do it without lights. I mean, something crazy. And he's like, all right, well. Does he like, he just handles it in his doing head? Doing it without lights. He doesn't yeah. make it a big deal. Never. Never raises his voice. Really? Never. Never wow. gets like so worked up to where he gets like angry about things. He just handles things so calmly. I admire that. It's very admirable because I would be going, oh crap. What are we going to do? Right. Flying off the handle a yeah, little bit. Way more high strung. And like, he just, I don't know. Just watching him handle this business that he runs. I can't imagine running a business where so many people depend on you. A. Right. B, handling it with such grace is really cool. So I'm going to say him. That's amazing. Yeah. Go Jason. I know. He's, he's really, yeah. he's great. I have I to know. give a little shout out. It was the most fun year touring with y'all last year. I'm going to miss so you. So fun. I know. And all the girls and all the guys. So fun. That was I a actually great was year. just talking about that because each year that comes, you know, you hope for good females. I do. On the <laughs> tour, I'm like, I hope the girlfriends are cool. I hope the wives are cool. Just whoever's out. And last year, we really hit the jackpot. We really have it every was year. A blast. But last year was so much fun. You guys are awesome. Oh, it was the best time ever. You know? So fun. It's so hard to fun. top. You know, yeah, I know, but you know, it's okay because you'll just be different memories, memories from here on out, you know, yeah, for sure. great, great memories, but more to come. Oh, I know. I just wish we could just redo it just one more year. I know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you started off as an NBA dancer. Yeah. And you were with Charlotte. Mm-hmm. They're the Bobcats yep. and you are the Lady Cats. Yeah. So tell me how you got into dancing and tell me what that was like to be on a squad of girls, like 20 girls working together. Were there cat fights? Did y'all get along? What did you learn from those years of your life? I don't really like drama. So I'm You're a very not drama girl, which I I love about you. I want everyone to get along. And (laughs) I I like to build people up so I don't understand when people break people down. I just don't get it. I But you're also like... I'm telling you, St. Francis and pretty much the gr- like you're like a perfect human, beautiful, sweet, oh. kind, saving all the animals. <laughs> you're very making sweet. people beautiful, feel great about themselves. <laughs> Not sure. I definitely have a lot of flaws. <laughs> Tons. However, I don't think so. I don't think there's any. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was. Hi, baby girl. Um, it was definitely difficult sometimes because you you throw like 15 to 20 plus girls in a one little room, yes. blood, sweat, tears. And with the NBA, there's so many games. So it's not like the NFL. It's not like, um, you know, you have like 10 games a season or whatever. We had 40 plus. A year? Yes, ma'am. And then if you make it to playoffs, you've got more. I mean, you just never – I mean, it's like a – definitely a part-time job on top of the job that you already have. So it's a lot, a lot of stress, a lot of memorization, which I have the worst memory. I can't remember anything. The dance moves? Oh, do and you then have you to learn have a to different do- dance each time. Yes, ma'am. So every week you're learning a new dance. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! And then you've got timeouts. You've got uh, quarter breaks. Like you've got so much stuff to remember. And I have, I literally have the worst memory. I have the worst memory. <laughs> I can remember songs. That's about it. So how do you do this? So how do you learn a new dance every week? How do you learn all the new moves every week? You would have to really do your homework and go home and really practice. practice Otherwise, you're going to make a butt of yourself out on that court. Oh my god. You know. So it so, was fun. It was just a lot. And I, I did for two years and um, it was awesome. Like I got to go to Italy. Are you serious? Yeah. They, they sent six of us to Milan for like an NBA tour, which was really cool. And then we, you know, shot calendars and we did so much fun stuff. And Michael Jordan owned the team. Oh so that was pretty cool. Do you know Michael Jordan? I don't know him. No, <sighs> but you know, he would, you know, ever so often just oversee the practice and then you'd really have to be on your craft oh, and then yeah be at the games you want to make them proud you want to make everybody proud so Is it was from really charlotte cool. how did he decide i to own think so. he's from north carolina okay. i mean he went to carolina um and his played. heart just belonged in charlotte yeah, he said i'm just gonna I, own that team mm-hmm. probably because so, of the dancers he probably knew the dancers <laughs> were really good no he had a he had a fiance <laughs> at the time which i think they're obviously married now and have children and stuff but she was beautiful Oh, so she was always there with him. So we didn't really know him, but um, it was just cool the fact that he was at the games and stuff. So you wanted to, to really do good for him and for everybody and your coach. And our coach was awesome. Honestly, one of the strongest women I've ever met. Really? Her best friend and mother both passed away from breast cancer when we were dancing. And so it was just, she was just so strong and she would show up and 
she would keep teaching because that was what she was there to do. And she got through that. And so she had a lot of hardships. She also was pregnant and we had no idea. Wow. Yes. And she would dance with this belly Are and we serious? had no clue. Yep. She would teach us these dances and under that little t-shirt, she would be rocking you know, a little pregnant. baby. We had no idea. Oh my yeah. Gosh. She's, she's a rock star. So what did you learn from interacting with 20 women on a regular basis? Mm. Pick your battles. I love that. <laughs> love that. You know, like, is it really worth you even saying anything? That's at this a point? really good thing to learn, especially with women. Cause yeah. I feel like sometimes women can go down a spiral and just like worry about stuff that probably, like you said, pick your battle shouldn't be a battle. Mm -hmm. So that's amazing. That yeah. You got, took that away. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard to bite your tongue when you just want to say, cause you know, you this just, person's a damn bull. Can you just <laughs> give it up? You little bad apple over there. You need to go, <laughs> but you just got to make it, make it work. And, you know, the least amount of drama, the better. Mm -hmm. Just trying to make everybody laugh and smile and have fun. And I always feel like I'm always the goober in the group, which I like because <laughs> I'm like, hey, if they're laughing, I mean, they may be laughing at me, but at least they're laughing. So I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> in the middle of this, you also, uh, also, in the middle of this, you also auditioned for American Idol. Yeah. And that was kind of like a life changing moment because this was happening really all at the was. same time. You're like dancing. You're starting the mm -hmm. dance team for the first time. Mm -hmm. You're also auditioning. You make it to Hollywood. So when you auditioned, Steven Tyler and Randy and JLo were there. Yes. And oh my God, love JLo. Yeah. But what was it like to see them in person and how did that go? Because uh, your voice is so soulful. Oh, well, you're very sweet. So much soul. Well, oh gosh, where to start with this one? So the <laughs> NBA was on the lockout. I don't know if you remember that, but they, they yes. weren't, we didn't have the games. So it was almost like, and I had such stage fright up to that point. I always love singing, but to be honest with you, I avoided every single major in college that had public speaking as a requirement. Cause really? I cannot, I, why at the, at the time I couldn't do it. I was like, I feel like you're I so good in front of a crowd. It's funny. It's Girl, I have seen you rap and dance and karaoke <laughs> and own a crowd. Like nobody's business. Now, <laughs> if you had caught me back in college, there's no way. There's absolutely no way. <laughs> So I um, didn't take any of those courses in college just because of that. And then I started dancing, which then they would throw me in on interviews or I would obviously have to be dancing in front of tons of people. So then I started to build some more confidence in front of the camera and everything. And then we went to the lockout. So NBA stopped having games. So then I was like, well, shoot, you know, American Idol's coming to town. I think I'm sure my parents were like, you got to go, you got to go. My dad is like my biggest man. Oh, he is? Oh, he's so sweet, yes. Sweetheart. I know. So he's like, just try, just try. Why not? So I get me and change my your life. It could, yeah. But you're like, whatever, dad, there's so many people. So I think my year that I auditioned, there was 112,000 people Whoa. that auditioned. Yes, ma'am. That is a lot. Did you have to wait in line? Mm, yes. How long, well, you, how long wait do you wait in, in line, line and then you kind of fill an auditorium. So it's like an arena. I mean, are you guaranteed to get to sing? You, you guaranteed like a are shot? if you get there early enough. So like you have a number or whatever it is, and then you kind of file out. At some point, they stop taking people because there's just a so hundred thousand people. people perform in one day. Is that even well, possible? It, I think that was across America. So okay. at the time, like in oh, my okay. thing, there might have been 12,000 or something. I mean, it was a lot, though. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, yeah, so then you perform, and then you have to go through a bunch of different stages, honestly, before you meet the judges. So you have to, like, go, you can, a lot of people are getting eliminated before they even get Tons. to the main judges. Yeah, because they're not going to make those judges yes. see everybody. 112,000 people. You know, they're going to eliminate probably, like, I guess, the worst and the best of the bunch. Yeah. You know? Yes. And then, so anyways, lo and behold, like a bunch of rounds happened. And then eventually later on, I met the judges, which was when they gave me the ticket to Hollywood. However, Steven Tyler liked me. Randy liked me. J-Lo did not. Why was J-Lo throwing you shade? She just hated me. I don't know. No idea. And you were such a fan of her. I know. So it was like Bumville, right? I was super bummed. It was like, even <laughs> though I got that ticket to go to Hollywood, I, I was like sad. I came like, out and, and my family's there and they're all, you know, yelling and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the back of my head, I'm like, dang, I really was thinking me and JLo, I, you know, I was We're like, I dance, thing. sing, like she danced. Did she sing? I just thought, you know, she was totally going to be like, girl, yeah. And it was not. It was like, girl, no, go oh. home. <laughs> JLo. Oh, no. Dang. dang. Okay, so how was Hollywood? What was that like? So you go to Hollywood when you get this yeah. golden ticket? I've <laughs> always wondered what that is like. So cool. So and how much many anxiety. Go to Hollywood, exactly. I don't really know. Actually, so that's I don't like remember. the last, that's when TV starts being filmed, right? Like, oh, yeah. And yeah. they want you to cry. They want you, emo <laughs> to, you know, to be emotional and like go through the thing. Well, I'm not like a big crier. So they kept, they would put the camera in your face if they thought you were about to get there, you know, like, well, tell us about it. And then it'd make you 
be upset. Well, I just remember being so full of anxiety because it's so scary. Yes. Because you know that you're about to perform. Um, half the time songs you don't really even know because they throw them on you, you know, sometimes. Like the group round was really difficult for oh, me. Oh, that would be very hard. You've seen harmonies too and just like figure oh, out cards. I can't sing harmony. I can't either. I can't hear that. It's very hard. Yeah, I know. I'm like, yeah. I cannot be in a girl group. And I yes. would love to be, but I cannot. <laughs> uh, I feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be in a girl group either, even though, I mean, harmonies are just like, you either hear them or you don't, I think. Yeah, and I don't. Me either. I mean, I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna fade out. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna dance. Is that? Yeah, exactly. So I remember like we had the group round and I was the first one to start a cappella. Oh my gosh. And right before we hit the stage, I'm on the side stage and I'm going and they're like countdown to when we walk out and I turn to one of the girls in my group and I'm like, I don't know the song. I don't know the song. What are the first words? Like you just blanked. Yes. No clue. What's the first line? What's the first line? <laughs> Did she tell you? Yeah. She was like, whatever it was. And it oh came back God, to you? It died. It came to me and okay. I was like. I said Thank like 800 God. prayers. Yeah. After that. Cause I was like, that was the big man upstairs because I totally drew a blank Ugh. and I ended up making it to the next round. I have no idea how that's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, you made it very far in American Idol. I made it like, you know, decently far farther than I expected to that's for sure. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And at the same time as when you met Jason too, right? Right this around a very there. Busy couple of years for you. You go from it like was really dancing busy. American Idol meeting Jason. Yeah. And then, oh, I went to American Idol, then back to dancing. And then... So you go back to the Bobcats. Uh-huh. And then I moved how'd to you LA. you decide to... Yes. Okay. So how'd you decide to say, hang it up with the Bobcats? Mm, you know, I started to work with someone within the American Idol group. So, or like production or whatever it was with one of the people. Um, one of the people within the organization, I guess. And so then I ended up moving to LA and then... How long did you live in LA? I lived in LA for only a year. Nice. And was then I moved to though? Vegas. What was Worked it? at the Bellagio. Yes, you did, girl. I sure That's did. That was fun. fun. Did was you have fun, fun in Vegas and LA? I had so much fun. I actually, if it weren't for Jason, I'd probably still live in California. That's how much I loved it. Okay. So mm-hmm. what were you loving so much about LA? I just love the weather. I know. I loved, You're I'm, a Cali girl. Well, I just love the beach. Granted, it's like the water's cold and, you know. But... I like how everybody's kind of free spirited and you can kind of do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. You can look like crap or you can wear a dang, you know, some crazy crap walking down the road and it doesn't matter. Yes. You know, anything. Goes. I love that. And I just, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. However, my whole family's in the South. So I've always been kind of the butterfly. So I was like, one day I knew I'd probably make it back to the South, but I just needed to get that stuff out of my system. Thank God you did, you know, at the Absolutely. right time too. Mm-hmm. So how's Vegas? Vegas was fun. I don't suggest living there. <laughs> what is it like? It's to fun live for in like Vegas? four days. I would say like two nights, three days, and I'm ready to like peace I'm out of Vegas. I'm telling you, yeah. You get like twice a year. Like yeah. there's a while where I feel like the guys are traveling. Probably Jason goes all the time, and uh-huh. it's like like almost every other month was Vegas. I'm like, this is too much Vegas. Oh, we're about to hit the ACMs again. Yes. I, I was like, oh gosh. At least I don't gamble. Because I, right. I never had a temptation to like go out and that's, spend money really, uh, or go down the yeah. rabbit hole there. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, I just, I worked at the Bellagio. That was really fun. Met some really cool people that I still talk to to this day. Aww. It's just tough out there if you live because a lot of people are tourists. Right. So making friends and stuff is just pretty difficult, you know, because it's like you meet people, but then they're gone in a few <laughs> days, you know, yeah. and then, you know, everybody out there, or a lot of people are about the nightlife. Did you dance in Vegas? Or No, I ended up singing. I actually got hired there to sing. Yes, you did. I, I did. Yeah. Because I sang one of the guys, oh man, one of the guys that was singing when I went there to visit with some friends did Idol with me. And he was on stage and was like, Britt, come up here and sing a song with me. So we were friends from Idol. And I did and then got off and then it kind of spiraled from there. And they were like, move to Vegas. Yeah. So okay, why not? Sure, why I was at the time still kind of am one of those people if you're like, let's move to Hawaii. Let's do it. I'll give it a year. I love that. You know? Totally. Why not? Unless there's a reason why not, why not? Why not? Yeah. I was single. I didn't have anything going on. I was like, That's when you gotta just live it up. Yeah. I always say that. The 20s are for yourself. You know, like, I feel like I'm so glad I spent the majority of my 20s just chasing dreams, doing what I wanted to do. Yes. Really? And how old were you when you got married? I was 27. Yeah. I feel like that's that's the best. To have, like, your early 20s. Because, like, who Uh knows anything in the early 20s? Not me. I was a hot mess. You probably did. Because your head's been screwed on straight. Oh, no, girl. Hot mess. (laughs) If I knew then what I know now, oh, how different my life would be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. 
I feel like I'm just each year. What would I you just tell think, your younger 20 self? Oh my God, chill out. Girl. <laughs> right. Chill don't out. Don't talk to that guy. Ugh, oh, that girl. guy may be cute, but he's an asshole. Yeah. Yes. It's not worth it. You think not at the time it. things are so important? Yes. Oh, not at all. Exactly. I actually tell like <laughs> Jason's daughters, I'm like, you're about to be one of them. You're about to be in high school. Whatever happens there at the time seems so important. Yes. It doesn't matter. No. Don't make a Life terrible mistake in high school. Absolutely not. You can obviously bounce back from anything. Anyone yeah. can. But like yes. high school is not it. It's not. And it's at not the time it. you think. It's it. Oh Actually, gosh, I always is, didn't like high school. Everything. No. I liked it, but like, I don't know. I was transferring. I transferred schools. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was insecure in high school. Insecure and in high school and college. Like, it was just mm-hmm. kind of like. I don't know. I didn't feel good in my skin yet. I, I didn't either, actually, now that you say that. But I had really bad acne. Speaking of skin. <laughs> Speaking of skin. <laughs> I had really bad skin <laughs> at the time. So, you know, I don't know. I feel like I missed out on a lot of stuff just because of it. I know that sounds so silly, but I think that's why but I'm it, into it, beauty so much now. Okay, so it made you feel so, like, self-conscious that you oh, wanted to help other people not feel that way? Goodness, absolutely. Is that what spurred your love it, for it may beauty be. and makeup? Because I remember there would be like pool parties and stuff going on in high school. And, you know, my mom would say, do you want to go? And I'm like, uh, no. Do you see what's going on? If I get in so the you water. Really did have acne? Yeah. Not just like, because your face is flawless. Well, you're very I would sweet. never believe you had acne at I this point. actually was on Accutane six times. Wow. Six, which if, I don't even know if some doctors would even prescribe it to somebody six times, but I was. Crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. So now I'm just super into skincare and like wear my sunscreen every day and am always wanting it to be super clear. And, you know, I get my yes. peels and I do all my stuff because I don't know. It was just so bad. It's almost like I'm making up for lost time. And it was almost kind of like traumatizing. You don't want to like go through that again. Yeah. I feel so bad for people. So talk to me about when you decided I'm going to make beauty my business. Because there was a thing that happened. It was like a transformation. You started, because I always knew you're you, like you're the most gorgeous creature on this earth. But you oh. started doing pop-up like clinics. Or, yeah. Like, I don't know what you call them. Classes or pop-up whatever. Pop-up classes. And yeah. then like you really started making videos and like really helping people understand everyday looks, which I love because I can't figure out. I can't figure out any looks. I'm like, I have one look that's <laughs> night and day and I don't <laughs> totally even know if it's right it. or wrong. Totally get it. So when did you decide to make this your business? Cause it just took off. Well, honestly, when I married Jason, because yeah. I wanted to be able to be on the road, yes. make money, do my own thing. So you actually have to get creative. Yeah, because, you know, I, I want to be with him, obviously. I want to experience all the cool stuff that he's experiencing. At the same time, don't want to lose myself because I'm so independent and have always had a job and stuff. And so I totally I, hear you. You know, for a while, I kind of lived the road life and, you know, just like, enjoyed it. Enjoyed, you know, not working for a minute. And then I was like twiddling my thumbs on the bus. So how is the road life? Tell me what road life is like from your okay. perspective. And I think, you know, but people <laughs> think it is so glamorous. It is not. I mean, you live out of a suitcase. You've got like dirty bus water, not really, mm-hmm. but kind of. Yeah. Um, What's that potable water? Whatever. That it just is. turns your hair color really crappy, <laughs> like yellow for me. I don't know. And then, like, I don't know. You just can't. You can't drink the water on the bus. You got to brush your teeth with a bottle of water. I mean, huh, you think it's so glamorous, and I try to make it as glamorous as possible by like dressing up and trying to look cute for the shows. And then there's but only so much you can do. Think tour buses are like magical, you know, like tour buses but you get on once you're like in life on a tour bus they are amazing and it's way better than a van or anything like that absolutely obviously yes but on one hand like we're spoiled rotten right with it because people get on it and they'll say this is so nice this is this is what you guys travel on but it's like no 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 this is like what we live on yes so even though it's nice for a minute after a while it's It's close quarters it's close quarters you're like totally I'm over it within the first month of traveling I swear so I'm do you like, go all the time or how often do you go? Um, it just depends. Sometimes I'm like, I've had enough for a minute. <laughs> I need we to have, a break. Yes. Cause I think it was last year we went from January to October. Nonstop. Pretty much nonstop. I mean, That's it was like, we're home Sunday afternoon, leave again Wednesday afternoon. So, so it's like, yeah. And on then, the road more than you're at home. Yeah. So that is pr- primarily our home. However, this year we decided to kind of decorate our own bus. I, oh my gosh, you got to see it. I haven't seen it yet. It's just in the works right now, but. We kind of did an overhaul. Um, and so, so you really made it more homey. Yes, because before we were just, you know, getting buses and saying, okay, this will do for a year or two, you know, and right. whatever. And then now this one's got a kennel for the dogs <gasps> under our bonks oh, so the babies can sleep under babies. us. Oh, no. Rotten. Oh, you're, Mia, you're <laughs> happy, aren't you? She's so happy. <laughs> you poop on a rug. <laughs> 
oh, I'm going to spank you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we actually put like time and effort into this bus. So I'm super excited for this year. For the first time, I'm stoked to go on the road. I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so tell me how you decided to start doing like pop-up makeup classes. Um, Yeah, that's pretty much how. I just wanted to be with Jason on the road and wanted to make money. And then I found that people were like, come to Texas, come to Minnesota, come here, come there. I'm like, oh my gosh, what if I just held occasional classes and taught people what I know or what I do? I mean, it's not even like, obviously what I do is not by the book by any means, but this is, if you guys like it, I'll teach you. You know, this is, this is what I do. And how perfect though, that fit your description of what you're wanting, like your own job, make your own money, but it's flexible. Jason's scheduled Uh actually works perfectly because it it takes you across the country. Exactly. And it was fun. And I got to meet so many awesome girls and, you know, make them happy, which was cool. And I would always pick someone within the class to do makeup on. So one of the girls would get their makeup done that day too, which was cool. And for the most part, they were coming to the show, which was nice because either they learned something to do their makeup to, to go to the show or, you know, to go out to events. But one of them got to get their makeup done for the show that night. So that was kind of cool. Oh, so they all go to the show that night too? For the most part, a lot of them are, you know, fans. What a fun and experience. It was really cool. I mean, I, I've kind of cut back on it a little bit just because we haven't been on the road and I haven't, I've done one in Nashville, which did really, really well. I need to do another one sometime soon. But yeah, I'm kind of just trying to enjoy the time off right now. But that's how I started doing the pop-up shows because, I mean, why not make people feel good about themselves and you have a quote which I love you have this on your YouTube video introduction and you Mm -hmm. say I love all things I love all things makeup and beauty and making women feel great in their own skin which I freaking love Mm -hmm. that you really do have a cause to make women feel great in their own Mm -hmm. skin no matter what your skin is because I know how it feels makeup can transform your face too like it really can make you feel confident trust me I do not look like I do now in the morning when I wake up. You woke up like this. Girl, I wish I could say I did, but I did not. (laughs) You did. You're sweet. My husband will tell you differently. It's fine. I'm like, for the first however long we dated, I'm like, okay, I gotta get my crap together. (laughs) Don't wake up. Luckily, he sleeps forever, so I can get up and like put on some mascara. And then you just put one of those eye patches on and then like wake up and magically it's perfect. It's like on Bridesmaids, you know, when she goes to the bathroom, she puts her lip gloss on and she goes and gets back in bed. Like she never, like it was natural. (laughs) Not at all. Not it. (laughs) So tell me some of like one or two of the most transformational stories that you've experienced from helping a woman with her makeup. Oh gosh. Have you had a moment that you're like, oh, this is like why I do this? Oh, so many times. Just honestly, like when people, you know, they don't really know how to do makeup. So they come in kind of bare faced, don't know what to do. And then at the end of me doing their makeup, I sh- give them the mirror and it's like they want to cry because they're like, that's me. They didn't know they could look like that. And it's really simple. It's like little simple steps that make such a difference. So there was one that um, she was so flipping beautiful. I was like, she should cheer for the dang Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. This girl is just gorgeous. And uh, she had a few children and her, she had never seen herself that way with makeup done properly on her face and so she was like I can't wait to go see my husband I'm gonna tell him we gotta go on a date tonight Mm -hmm. and that always makes me feel good because I'm like girl get home to your man sexy yes and I think I've actually talked about this to several people Mm -hmm. I think it is a-okay and actually wonderful to feel sexy in your own body especially for your husband and Mm -hmm. for like just to feel good whatever it is yes Uh uh-huh to feel like you like feel great in your skin yes that changes your whole outlook on life it does it does because I mean there's days obviously you wake up and you may feel a little bit overweight or you may feel like your skin's not good or your hair's just funky or whatever's going Mm -hmm. on and a lot of times that can you know dictate like how your day goes I know that sounds kind of vain I know but sometimes I'll have like a big breakout and I'm like I just don't even want to go anywhere I just want to sit at home with pimple cream on you know (laughs) or like a hair mask like I need to I need a minute yeah (laughs) and it's funny how stuff like that can dictate your how you feel that day and so you know just trying to help women you know be the best them as far as looks go and stuff it really does make a difference so, so talk to me about your YouTube page because you launched and you also kind of launched with Halloween looks, which I think was oh. great. And at the same time, mm-hmm. you did a combination like partnership with the Dry House for the day where you like gave people makeup for Halloween. Yeah. So tell me about your YouTube page and what people can expect there. Because I know you have like a series of everyday looks, which I mm-hmm. love. You have like costume looks. So yes. what kind of things you want? are we going to be expecting? Well, it's you? been kind of slow because I don't know how to film or edit. So I have to like <laughs> learn how to, do, I had help on the first few videos. Um, so I'm trying to like learn and teach myself so that just it becomes Technology's easier. Crazy. 
I'm not good at technology. I know, me either. It's overwhelming I'm really not. to me. Setting up the cameras and the editing this and that. I just I, It's a process. I honestly just don't have patience. <laughs> I need to sit down and, and like really, you know, it's just easier for someone who knows what they're doing. I'm like, okay, you got it. Perfect. Right. And they can make it look spotless. Yes. And they can add perfect. music and they can do all these cool things. I'm like, that would take me three days. It takes them 30 mm-hmm. minutes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's been kind of slow. However, I do want to continue with it. And once I do learn and get better at it, um, just stuff like there's whatever people request, really, even if it's like my skincare routine or, you know, stuff with fashion. What or is your skincare or, routine? It varies. Oh do you have Lord. like a, a certain type of product that you like to use? Oh, I have so many. The problem is, is that. I need, I'm almost 30, so I need, and I have Big started. year, the big birthday I year. Oh, I'm so excited. I actually feel like it's fine. 30s like fine are the wine. best. You know, 30s it's like you get best. better with age. Totally. I think. I think 30s are the best. I wouldn't go back to my 20s for a million bucks. Really? No, but I was yeah. a hot mess in my 20s. I know. I'm still kind of a hot mess. I feel like I might always be a hot mess, but it's totally <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm so hot mess too. I mean, I'm d- who am I pulling? It's not put together, but at least my head's not totally insane like it used to be. Yes. I do You're handle things to kill the 30s. Ah, uh, babies. Mm-hmm. You got it. I can't wait for that. You want some babies in the 30s? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Why Have not? some babies. Why not? Yeah. I don't know. But what was the question? So the question <laughs> was we were talking about your YouTube page. Yeah. And having someone do the editing and how it's been kind of slow, but you started with everyday looks. Yes. Products that you use. Yes. And we're not even drinking champagne. I was going to bring champagne. I forgot. Uh, you know, I'm glad we didn't because this could get real weird. <laughs> so, you know, what are we talking about? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So everyday looks, what you use for your face, like oh, regime. Got it. 30. Yes. Thir- and then you're so, turning 30. Yeah. So I, I have been trying to start with like the age preventative stuff and trying to do like, you know, eye creams and really help with wrinkles and stuff like use products that will help me look better mm-hmm. as far as age goes. Um, but the problem is, is my skin's so acne prone and sensitive. So like, it's almost like I find it, it's like a day to day thing. Like if I have a breakout, right. then I'll treat it with some acne products that day. If um, my face is feeling good and looking clear, then I'll treat the wrinkles that day. You know, it just, it just varies based on what's happening that mm-hmm. day. You would think that I would stop getting pimples at, you know, around 30, but no, no, I feel like I got an adult onset acne. Like in my late twenties, I had nothing. And then they just all started coming in my thirties. Yep. I know. Yeah. I don't understand. And being on the road's tough too because that like, recycled air. Dirty. Yeah. You can't get fully clean on the road. I really don't think you can. Not on Tell the bus bus venue unless you get to like a hotel. It's like oh, always yeah. a little dirty. Mm-hmm. And you my think? husband's kind of a hermit. So he doesn't like <laughs> to leave the bus. Whereas if we have an option of a hotel, I'm like, please, babe, just give me one <laughs> night. I just want to go and sprawl out in this king size bed, <laughs> take a shower for an hour. <laughs> yeah. You know, because you just don't get to do that on the bus. So, I don't know. So, it's, it's hard to stay totally clean in a totally clean face. Yeah, because the water's not... It's like gas station water, mm-hmm. you know, because they yes. fill it up there. Yeah. So, it can't be healthy. No. So, if I was going to do, like, an everyday routine and I didn't mm-hmm. want to spend forever doing it, how long would it take and how many products would I need? It depends. If you want it to be pretty natural... I'm a little different because I have my things. Like, I need my lip liner. Mm-hmm. I need eyeliner. You know, those are things, unless I have a tan. If you have a tan, everything's <laughs> better, which That's I don't true. condone tanning. I condone spray tanning. You think spray tanning's worse? No, it's great. Oh, condone. What does that mean? You like it? Oh, wait. What did I just say? I think you're right. No, I don't. I, I don't always... condone spray tanning. No, you're right. But I do. You, okay. Yes. So, wait. No, you're right. Supporting spray tanning, not tanning beds. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Right. Too okay. many wrinkles. Too many yes. sunspots. Too much. Crap it's not worth on. it. No, Especially I've been spray trying tans to out there now. everything I did in my younger years because my parents like didn't quite believe in sunscreen. Okay, okay they did, but not not often. You know, I it's used, like, hey, put on your thirty yes. once in the day at the lake, and then you're good. No, when tanning beds came out, this is terrible. Oh. I used to double tanning bed. Like I would go to one in the morning and another one in the afternoon. Oh. Is that not insane? It's insane, but insane. I am insane. Totally and now get I'm it. like, oh my poor body. Why did I do that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. So I'm trying now to reverse everything that I did as far as sun goes, you know? Yes. So it kind of sucks. So so tell me what you're looking forward to in 2017. Oh, man. 30? You're going to be 30. I'm going to be 30. Jason's going to be 40. Ah, so you are exactly it's a like decade a big, apart. Yeah. It's a big This is a big deal. year. And it's also 2017, so it's lucky. Seven. Is it lucky? Sevens oh, are lucky. They're the luckiest yes, years. I need some luck. Okay. Yes. Let me tell you. 
Yes. You're Last year was like, something. I think 2016 was a little rough for a lot of people. 2016 was like great <sighs> in so many ways. Yeah. Like, I, like obviously like touring with you guys was like the best and mm-hmm. I launched this podcast. It was great. But like I had a heavy year. It was just like mm-hmm. an exhausting year for some reason. I Why know. was yours? What was well, it for you? Well, Bentley got diagnosed with cancer. My, <gasps> my bulldog. Yeah. And so that's the kinda, sweetest little chub. Oh my God. He's sweet little chubby. And we moved into this new house um, at the beginning of the year. So it was great. However... Jason was on the road and my mom and a couple people came in town to help me move. And Bentley got diagnosed with cancer the day we were moving. So I was like in shambles, you know, I mean, he was over there. He was actually in the hospital, but he just went South real quick. And then, so it was like trying to tell people where to put stuff and help them. And I'm over here just crying in the corner half the time, you know, cause I'm like, I cannot lose him. I have had him since college. He is my heart, soul and everything in between. Like, I know it sounds so silly, but he is my no, man. No, it's not. He, he is, is. He's your man. Other than my husband, he is like <laughs> He's the most the important one. thing to be. I swear. It's so weird to feel that way about a, a dog, but I do. Love you, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> she is at the fireplace. She's on the fireplace. You are cute. She's just over there looking at you like, I'm ready to be held. Ready to be held. I know. She's, she feels left out. Um, so that, you know, it started out with Benny getting cancer and, And luckily, though, I had to find the silver lining in it all. Because even though he got diagnosed, he's still kicking. And it's 2017. So it's like. So what was the silver lining that you found? That he's still alive. And he's still doing good. You know, he's in chemo. But he's still here. So it's like. there you go. So why mourn that he's sick when he's feeling great and still here? Exactly. And I still have him. And that's such a blessing. And then, like, I didn't, you know, lose anyone close to me. I always pray for everyone's health and I just want everyone to be safe and like in my life still I don't want anyone to pass away I have a really hard time with death um so everyone immediate to me you know was did well like as far as health goes you know for 2016 but then one of my really really good friends in Vegas one of my girls her baby passed away in, in the summer it was right after my birthday in June and um that was like the worst Seriously, the worst thing I've ever experienced in life. I don't think anyone should have to bury a child, their child, a child period. Um, But, you know, he was so, he was five months. So that was really, really hard. I mean, hard to this day. Think about it every day. Think about her every day. So yeah, that's, it's tough. Life is so precious. Oh my goodness. It is so precious. And it can change so quickly. It can change so quickly. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think too, exactly kind of what you're saying. You just have to like cherish it and not take Mm -hmm. it for granted and value the relationships because relationships at the end of the day are really what makes all of it worthwhile. Absolutely. I'm like, we could lose all of this. Everything can go away tomorrow. But if I still have my people. Yeah. I'm good. You can rebuild. You can figure something else out. I'm always like, we can move to Mexico, open open a taco stand. (laughs) How fun would that be? We should actually consider. It'd be really fun. (laughs) (laughs) Wouldn't be mad. Wouldn't be mad at all. Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, I mean, there was, it, it was a great year in some aspects and then sad in others. So, but I think, you know, that's so 2017, just life. we're thinking babies. I, I would love babies. <laughs> if God would give me some, bless me with some, I would totally be happy about it. You know? Yeah, totally. Maybe I'll try to have some with you. Oh, Caroline, Let's please. have twins like Beyonce. Yes. In October. In October. Well, I told Michael, maybe we'll start trying in October. Oh, I'm trying I, to get him on board oh. for it. Yeah, but he'll just be so happy, especially if you have a girl, be a little you, he'll be, oh my gosh, he'll never be the same. Are you kidding? Uh, yeah. Do you want a little girl and a little boy? I want, I want a boy and I want a girl. Okay. Twins. I'm telling you, the twins are the way to go. One you pregnancy, know, two babies. But then you think about our lifestyle and the way that we travel. Could you travel with twins? I guess you figure it out. I guess you do. I mean, you just have to, right? I mean, if Beyonce can do it. If However, can Jason do it. does not want nannies. Not even like Mm-mm. a good friend that could help watch the kids? I mean... Maybe. Okay. But that's his good. mom. He wants to raise his himself. mom. Okay. Which he would love that. But he's just like, no, absolutely not. We can do this by ourselves. I'm like. So tell me about road life okay. with kids. What would that look like? Because that's the Ooh. thing that I can never like quite figure out how to do that part of. I don't know. Because like, I feel like we would miss out on a lot being the mom. Yeah. You, you know? can't go to everything. That. And then the boys don't start playing till later. You mm-hmm. know, Jason doesn't go on till 930 at night. Yeah. So then. I can't go to the show because I've got babies or a baby, you know, and yeah. then he doesn't get done till 11. Once they hang out with his band, which I don't blame him, you know, or yeah. whatever. But then it's like, you just kind of kick it by yourself. I know. You know, and I feel like that. That's the hard. thing. That's it's the hard thing to that- let go of that. Like I can, I'm on my own schedule, can do whatever I want. If I want to go over here and have a drink, I can. If I want to go watch the show, I can, mm-hmm. you know, entertain all your friends that are in town. Mm-mm. I know. I think that kind of just. world with babies. Yeah. But I guess we all have to keep evolving, huh? 
or not. <laughs> Maybe we decide not I to have babies. <laughs> lots of animals. <laughs> lots of animals. Just save I all the have dogs. T- save every dog. Yeah. Save them all. I really want to do that, actually. Start a dog rescue. If you do it, I'll help you out. I promise. That's part of my... I want to do that on my bucket list one at one point in my life. Yep. I know. I want to do it, too. I hear, that, hear there's, like, kill shelters in Nashville, and I had no idea. Okay. So you should start swooping up those dogs. Start your own do, rescue. Do? Start a rescue okay. out here. Yeah. Yeah. We have a barn. Yeah, great. That's all you need. And get a vet to come, like, you know, once yeah. a week, just, like, monitor the pets. And then they can... We can get donations to make sure they're all vaccinated, and then people will come adopt them, and it'll be perfect. <sighs> That sounds like such a dream. It's gonna be I wouldn't even go on the road anymore. That would be no. my full focus. Yes, totally. I think that'd be a great focus. So put that on the bucket list. I do too. So something else that you have done with Jason that I think is so cute is y'all do these like car oh. karaoke. Bless like, his heart. The music I make him do. It is the funniest <laughs> stuff ever. And I feel like it's so fun to see Jason like that because I don't know if people you expect that he's so no funny. Cl- he is so funny. He is so funny. He really is. And he's so sarcastic. Our humor is so different. He's sarcastic and says things and like won't laugh and then... You know, I say, th- I do not have a filter sometimes, <laughs> so I will just talk like th- stuff I should not ever say, but I say it. And so we j- we're just so different. He's so sarcastic and I, I'm just so different. So anyways, I was like, this is fun, babe. I feel like people should be able to see your personality more because they only see, you know, when he does interviews, he's a little more like proper and that's not really him. Cause he's like a joking all the time, right? All the time. And people don't know that. You think he's being serious. So you're like, oh my gosh. It took me serious? a minute. To, because he's you know, just being funny. He's it's just, just funny. sarcastic humor. He's sarcastic as crap. And I had, I'm like, <laughs> okay, wait, was he serious? Does he really think that my jeans look like crap? I'm confused. You know? <laughs> no, he's just being funny. Oh my God, I need to change. <laughs> yeah. So in these car videos, or what are you calling them? They're like, I don't know what they are. It's like karaoke car. Kind of. And y'all are like, listen to rap songs. You get so funny because you get I like road rage a little bit driving. Like y'all are like Heck, yelling at people. Yeah, I don't understand by. people. It, I literally, like, the first time you posted it, I almost had tears in my eyes laughing so hard. I was like, this is the funniest stuff ever, and y'all need your own TV show. Well, I get car sick, so if I'm not driving... Because you're the driver. Yeah, I always drive, because when he drives, A, he cannot drive, first of all. He is, like, all over the place. So, I get car sick. Even if I didn't get car sick, I would throw up because he was driving, in general. But I get car sick just what in any situation. So, I drive... Which makes him so scared because he he's not in control, you know. And then I like rap and I like R and B and I like totally different music than him. He's like classic classical rock and. But he's he's knowing these words. I see him rapping now. In oh, your he video. does. Oh, he knows. I'm like, babe, you gotta learn this song. This is our next karaoke jam. He's he like, knows it. And, and no. <laughs> you spout them out. But then he does. He tries. <laughs> that Dr. Dre and Eminem. I think y'all should like honestly do your own TV show together. He would never. I, I, he's so funny though. Y'all are so funny Here's the thing. Together. We're funny, but boy, we are passionate people. Let me just say, I'm like, oh, if people only knew. If they could be a fly on the wall. I think that's great. You need passion. I know. It's Life's just like when we get upset, we're upset. Yes. And I'm like, that's something that you have to, you have to be okay and willing to let people into that part of your life and let, you know, like people judge a lot. And oh, sometimes people love it's to really judge. difficult. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, because you're freaking saint whatever Come people on. people love to judge love it i know we just can't worry about that oh i know haters gonna hate i know i think the thing is jace would never want cameras in the house that much okay you know he likes or in our privacy. life absolutely i get that actually yeah. like living such a public life you do like to have your sanctuary yeah because we're so i mean it's so public when we're on the road we come home and we're like oh, breathe. you know yeah so coming home and having cameras he oh. would probably be like okay everybody get out but you did do that one time with Tank when you surprised him. He I came did, home yeah. and you surprised him on that show, Tank, with a yeah. big fish tank. And you uh-huh. pulled it off. I did. I can't so believe it. he did come home to some cameras. Well, you know, and the he crazy- loved it. He loved it. But the thing is, I had a GoPro on the Polaris that I drove to our barn to pick him up at. And so the whole time, like, I, I can't believe he didn't realize what was going on. But I, I was like, like, you pulled it off. I know. I was like, I had to think of stupid stuff. Like, babe, remember that GoPro you got me a couple years ago? Whatever. I learned how to use it. I want to stick it on the Polaris and come pick you up and see if it works. <laughs> and you know, like, just okay. like, he's like, all right. I mean, that's weird, <laughs> but okay. So it was just little things that you had to think about that. Oh, and the worst part. So we, the whole crew hid their cars and everything. They put their like equipment on our back porch. So when I pulled up to the garage to park the Polaris, he it? turned around and all of the camera equipment and stuff was on the back porch. No. And he's going, the heck is all that? What is that? And um, he starts walking that way. I was like, oh, I've been working on my blog. 
I think had fast, some think fast. Pe- yes. Yeah. I, I started, <laughs> this is funny. Um, I had to make it up. So I was like, I've been working on my blog and people were over here with camera stuff, like helping me. So right. he's kind of like, all right, he's like that's bizarre that like, you didn't tell me that, okay. but okay. I start breaking on in hype. <laughs> Full blown. <laughs> and y'all are about to be filmed for tank because you're about to yes. tank him. I have hives everywhere because you're a terrible me liar so I can't lie that's good yes you can't lie I mean you break out in high oh I broke out everywhere so in the show I have this like shawl thing on I don't even know what you call it and I just wrapped myself up in I it did to the see po- your shawl people thought I was pregnant they thought I was like hiding a belly you're hiding your hives I was hiding my hives Brittany that's hilarious I broke out everywhere because oh. I was so nervous stressed out upset that I had just lied like everything I was oh broken God, out everywhere that's... so I just hid in this thing like Oh my god! Just don't pan that camera over here. Stop it! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! The things that people like go on behind the scenes, you know? Oh, you have no clue. They're like, she's hiding a bump. She's got, like, she's pregnant. I'm like, oh no. She's hiding some high. I'm just broke out because I'm freaking stressed out. Ugh, that's you hilarious. know, I can't believe I pulled it off. But now off we have this, a hitch, which is amazing. We have this awesome fish tank now. So. It's gorgeous, and that was a perfect spot to put it. I think so too. Mm-hmm. That was our Christmas tree spot, and Jason's like, well, now we don't have anywhere to put the tree. I'm like. As who cares? But whatever. You gotta we'll put it in the it. corner. It's gorgeous of the house. Who cares? Mm-hmm. This is this is awesome. So yeah. we've got an eel. His name's Nessie, like the Loch Ness monster. Ah, uh, cutie. Oh, uh, I get really talk attached. To oh my gosh, they're my babies. They are. Yeah. Oh. One's name's Kickstand. He's so funny. He'll oh swim kids. and then he'll stick his fin out real quick and just <laughs> chill. And then he'll swim and then he'll just chill. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> the cutest thing so he's ever. He's like a mime. He's also awesome. Kickstand. Is kickstand. that why? Because he has a little kickstand. That's cute, Brittany. They were babies. <laughs> okay, so we're going to wrap up. Kay. Tell me what you're most excited about in 2017. Um, potentially building our family. Mm-hmm. That would be nice. Um, just being on the road and watching Jace do his thing. And then tell I me about know. makeup world. Just, what can we be looking forward to, to in the makeup world? Well, from Brittany Lane? I don't your know. Your online? Yeah, m- maybe. Maybe some stuff with like. Online. I've been looking into clothes too because I'm like super into clothes and fashion and stuff. I and think you, I think it's time for you to put together a line. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A line. Or maybe that out there. I actually was thinking about opening a store in Nashville too. You should. Yeah. It could be kind of like a beauty uh, clothing store I as think well, that'd be but something to put energy into and like feel, you know, a little more accomplished and, and, and kind of build, build a brand. And well, you got a brand. Work on that. Thanks. I would buy whatever <laughs> you sell. You're very sweet. Thank so you. So I close all my interviews with leave your light. Okay. So leave some inspiration of how you have been inspired or how you'd like to inspire people. Oh, just make people feel good about themselves because at the end of the day, don't throw shade. Who needs all that mess? Be nice to people. Appreciate the ones that you're around. Tell everybody that you love them because you never know what the day is going to bring, you know? Oh, so yeah. just be cool. Be nice. No drama. Just be a good person. It's really not that hard. You know, right. wake up happy. Like happiness is a choice. When you get up in the morning, yes. you could have a bad attitude or you could say, you know what? Thank you for letting me live this day because this is beautiful. I love that. Yeah. So I don't know. Just be a happy person. You radiate sunshine. Oh. You're like a bright light. Thank you. you so do. are you. Well, thanks for joining yeah. me. Thank you for having me. Yes. Okay. See ya. Bye. Bye.